let's talk for a moment. The recent absolute media meltdown and social media calamity that occurred because of a terrifying, evil, menacing, godforsaken war on humanity, the gall and the sheer abject terror inflicted by a balloon. Or UFOs. Oh shit. Because they're unidentified and they're flying. And they're objects. So they're UFOs, so everybody start talking about fucking aliens. Um I I figure it's it's a good moment to sort of bring everything in, into perspective here and uh, bring up the sort of thing surrounding the balloons and the sort of thing surrounding the UFOs and a bunch of other stuff in general that I think is just interesting. To start off with, let's start off with the fact that the balloon itself is a manufactured crisis. The original Chinese spy balloon is fucking bullshit. Basically, it was a weather balloon. The U.S. government knew it was a weather balloon, and they knew that the wind blew it off course. That's it. That's the story. They knew it was a weather balloon. They knew the wind blew it off course. <laughs> and they, they they followed it. They were watching it. They knew exactly what it was, what it was doing, and why it was where it was. They knew! By the time a Chinese spy balloon crossed into American airspace late last month, the Washington Post says, <laughs> U.S. military and intelligence agencies had been tracking it for nearly a week, watching as it lifted off from its home base in Hainan Island near China's south coast. U.S. monitors watched as the balloon settled into a flight path that would appear to have taken it over the U.S. territory of Guam, but somewhere along that easterly route, the craft took an unexpected northern turn, according to several U.S. officials who said that analysts are now examining the possibility that China didn't intend to penetrate the American heartland with their airborne surveillance device. The balloon floated over Alaska's Aleutian Islands, thousands of miles away from Guam, then drifted over Canada where it encountered strong winds that have appeared to have pushed the balloon south into the continental U.S., the official said, speaking on the condition of anonymity to describe sensitive intelligence. A U.S. fighter jet shot the balloon down off the coast of South Carolina on February 4th, a week after it crossed over Alaska. This new account suggests that the ensuing international crisis that has ratcheted up tensions between Washington and Beijing may have been at least partially the result of a mistake. Or a lie. I'll just throw that out there. Meanwhile, the White House on Tuesday said that three other objects shot down over North America in the last week may have posed no national security threat, striking perhaps the clearest distinction yet between those flying anomalies and the suspected spy balloon. John Kirby, the National Security Council's coordinator for strategic communications, told reporters that U.S. intelligence community will not dismiss a, as a possibility that the three craft instead belonged to a commercial organization or research entity and were therefore benign. So the U.S. scrambled its military fucking industrial complex to shoot down benign bullshit in a weather balloon! And they widened their media scope. They fucking scrambled the MSM to tell you to panic, 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 get mad at China, do it! And, you know, fuck the Chinese government, right? I'm not simping here, 
But what I will say is that this is a bullshit reason to go after them. But that doesn't stop the U.S. fucking government, now does it? No. The U.S. government will proceed on these grounds. The U.S. government will absolutely frenzy everyone, make everyone panic over fucking balloons. And while they do that, you know, some of those benign crafts, uh, they shut down goddamn hobby balloons with Sidewinder missiles! President Biden on Thursday acknowledged that the three unidentified objects he ordered the U.S. military to shoot down were likely harmless weather balloons. Quote, the intelligence community's current assessment is that these three objects were most likely balloons tied to private companies, recreation, or research institutions studying weather or conducting other scientific research, Biden said. Following the panic caused by the Chinese balloon that floated over the U.S., U.S. fighter jets shot down unidentified objects on February 10th, 11th, and 12th using heat-seeking AIM-9X Sidewinder missiles, which are worth over $400,000 apiece! Biden said the military was still working to collect the debris. Our military and the Canadian military are seeking to recover the debris so we can learn more about these objects. So they shot down for the price of about $1.2 million HOBBY BULLSHIT IN A WEATHER BALLOON! And, and, and just to add some spice to this, let's be super clear here that the U.S. has a long history of doing exactly what they accuse China of doing, which is why this nice handy little article here has this to say. Spy balloons evoke bad Cold War memories for China. With the spy balloon commanding non-stop cable news coverage much of last week, I found it difficult, even as a historian of Cold War espionage between the U.S. and China, to resist laughing out loud at the whole affair. There's something inherently ridiculous about balloons and the series of bad decisions and misplaced rhetoric from whatever possessed China to float a gigantic blimp over the U.S. heartland to the partisan hysterics unleashed in the U.S. media as a result. Laughter can be the best medicine for an international crisis in the making, at least involving incidents where no one gets hurt. But after a weekend spate of the United States shooting down objects floating in the stratosphere over North America and Beijing reporting its own mystery object over the LOC, serious questions are emerging about surveillance technologies and the proper diplomatic or even military response Seen in the larger history of U.S.-China relations, does the spy balloon take on any greater meaning and what lessons might be learned from the past? Having recently published this guy's book about a spy plane sent into China during the height of the Korean War, I could not help but be struck by the profound historical irony of the spy balloon frenzy. It has been kind of a farcical reversal of what communist China faced for decades after its founding in 1949. Unrelenting efforts by the United States to spy on and even subvert their country. In perhaps the most brazen clandestine mission, the CIA <laughs> recruited anti-communist agents in the then British colony of Hong Kong flew them to the Pacific island of Saipan for paramilitary training and then dropped them from unmarked transport planes over northeast China in 1952. Once on the ground, agent teams were expected to foment a counter-revolution to overthrow then-Chinese leader Mao Zedong, relying on occasional resupply drops from CIA planes. Operation Tropic took place at the height of the Korean War when the U.S. was desperate for means to weaken the Chinese war efforts without publicly taking the war onto the mainland. 
thus the reliance on activities that could be plausibly denied. Even after the Korean War armistice in 53, the CIA continued to carry out or support an array of aerial clandestine activities directed against mainland China. The major platform for these operations was the island of Taiwan, then under the aggrieved rule of Chinese Communist Party nemesis and military dictator Chiang Kai-shek, leader of the Nationalist Party. Chiang needed to sustain the hope or maintain the illusion that one day he would vanquish Mao and reconquer the mainland. So he was game to carry out covert missions across the Taiwan Strait, sending his planes on leaflet dropping missions over mainland cities or launching unmanned balloons with anti-communist propaganda materials. But beginning in the mid-1950s, the Americans shifted their emphasis from subversion to surveillance. So they started to send surveillance shit. You can read this article as well. I will include links to articles in the fucking description. But basically, the U.S. has been spying on China using exactly these means forever. And you know what else? You know what really, really rubbed my cock off about all this? What really set me off was the fact that so many U.S. military uh, industrial complex paid bot fucking media sources were all too quick to jump right on the fervor frenzy of saying UFO. This is a UFO. We can't identify it. It's a flying object. So UFO! Because everybody knows that when you say UFO, the only conversation anyone's going to be thinking of is aliens. We've got aliens in the place. So they scramble jets, something that's already fucking expensive, to shoot down fucking UFOs with over $1.2 million worth of missiles because of UFOs. I wonder where we heard that before. UFOs turning out to be basically bullshit. Oh, right. The CIA. They admitted that the U.S. government lied about UFO sightings. In 1997, the New York Times put this out and said, In the darkest days of the Cold War, the military lied to the American public about the true nature of many unidentified flying objects in an effort to hide its growing fleet of spy planes, a CIA study says. The deceptions were made in the 50s and 60s amid a wave of UFO sightings that alarmed the public in parts of official Washington. The CIA says the Air Force knew that most reports by citizens and aviation experts were based on fleeting glimpses of U-2 and SR-71 spy planes which fly extremely high. The kinds of things that they were sending over China! So it's almost like the U.S. has been doing this shit to other countries and creating UFO panics because it's better than admitting that the U.S. is a spy organization over the entire fucking planet and spending millions of dollars a day doing bullshit like this is just another example of the rampant military-industrial complex fucking us again. Well, might I add, there are so many other, many more important things going on on the ground that could use maybe $1.2 million here or there. You gotta see why I'm a little bit fucking irritated, right? So, I just kind of feel like a lot of this stuff is manufactured crisis, manufactured panic. In the same way that a US-funded lab totally didn't leak the virus to begin with, and it was totally Chinese bats. We can just blame China, say that they've got a bad government or a bad cultural practice, and we can say that they are responsible for things that the U.S. is responsible for, or that the U.S. just doesn't fucking understand, or that the U.S. is just maliciously using as ways to distract from things that the U.S. is maliciously doing. We're supposed to look up to the skies. We're supposed to say that this is the worst thing that the Chinese government might have a spy balloon. But the U.S. is the biggest spy agency on the fucking planet! And meanwhile, 
they have like no problem basically with the Chinese spy app TikTok or any number of other Tencent affiliated apps absolutely infesting our technological landscape. And if they did, you think they would be banned. They could sanction an entire country in the form of Russia, but they can't ban TikTok? Fuck no. They don't care about it, and any time they claim they do, it's only to get kids to download it in order to be subversive and include, uh, include themselves in the spying footprint. Because the U.S. government knows exactly what they're doing. It's divide and conquer. It's ordo ab chao. It's problem reaction solution. They don't care about Chinese spy technology. They just care about having a crisis that they can manufacture to get everybody scared in doing what they say. Just like the virus that was eventually connected to a Fauci-connected Western-connected lab. Right? And, and while I'm at it, let me just read a couple tweets and, and then finish off with a nice bit of irony here because... Unironically, don't look up. UFO. Chinese spy balloon. They want you focused on the sky, so you ignore what they're doing to you on the ground. 1K more homeless a year. Record-breaking layoffs. ODs killing by cops. Unemployment and poverty are up. Seriously, don't look up. The more we stay distracted by objects in the sky, the more we lose sight of the objectives on the ground. That's how they get away with it. It's the political equivalent of jingling keys in front of a baby. What are they doing while you're focused on that? Much more important. And I also threw this out there because I might as well and I need the money. You can donate to me if you want. But I said for $100 a pop, I will collaborate with you to make fake UFO footage because it's not that hard and I need the money. DM me. Because I can. I can make fake UFO footage fucking tonight. Because the amount of UFO footage that is necessary to call something a UFO is garbage. And it's so easy to fake. And the US government literally just has to put a fucking dot on a screen in allegedly military footage, and you will follow that dot. Follow that dot! Maybe it's a fucking problem that we're so easily distracted. And, just to put some icing on the cake, they're spending $1.5 million, basically, to shoot down a few benign objects because they scare you about China, right? But this is what the railways look like in Ohio. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this, this shouldn't be the target of our spending goals. We shouldn't be focused on this. We should be focused on the skies. You see how an actual freight train has to go across this bullshit? You see how it would be much cheaper to replace rail lines like this to avoid, I don't know, fucking toxic vinyl chloride derailment, that kind of thing. You know, toxic derailments in general. Wouldn't it be kind of better to put the money into the local economies and fix our shit here and stop having this untenable garbage that this society calls a government and society in general? Wouldn't it be better to do that than to shoot down fake fucking UFOs and Chinese weather balloons in the name of stopping something that the US government does all the fucking time and has forever? Nah. Let's just stick to yelling about the sky every time the government tells us to look up. That's much better. If you disagree with that basic premise, then you're a traitor and a scoundrel, and you're also awesome and you should subscribe to this channel because I've got so many more reasons that you need to smash the fucking state.